Okay, hey everybody, it's Brett, and uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And looks like we starting to see some movement in the markets. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a screen share here in a bit. It in a minute, rather, I'm just gonna pull up uh, lots of people here today. So welcome everybody, and I'm gonna have my chat window open. Of course, we'll take Q and A at the end. So how many of you think that this market's going higher? How many of you think the markets are going lower? Well, let's unpack all of that and uh, let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here. Uh, we'll dive into it. So uh, we'll drop over here and just let me know if you guys can see this. I won't have the screen camera on the whole time, but I'm going to dive into some news like we do every week and uh, also uh, get dive into the charts to kind of look at what's happening, what's moving. And of course, do some training on our indicators and a bit of a uh, news flash. Been chatting with Joe the mastermind behind the indicators. He's got some really cool new stuff. Uh, and if you were part of the vertical returns class two years ago, uh, we are going to redo that with a whole new setup, entirely everything new, really exciting stuff. So I'll keep a uh, stay tuned for that. We might do a preview on that Friday. So, all right, uh, let's see any questions right off the bat here before we get started. And uh, we can start with that. Although I can see the uh, chat all of a sudden I'm on, uh, I'm still on the road here a little bit. So, Anyway, um, I'll jump over to that in a minute. In the news, Bitcoin dormant for five years or more awakens in a new distribution. We've been sort of following that. And again, um, you know, these things don't always happen in the um, regular markets. Often they're in the OTC markets, which don't affect price. But in this case, uh, dormant for five years, you know, not too bad. Five years, if it was 10 years or longer, that might be a little bit um, more of a concern. Let's see. And typically when that happens, they they are taking some profits here. But I, I think that would be foolish. I think we are ready to go much, much higher. And although there might be a, a one more pullback on things, I think by certainly by August, September, we're going to really see some nice movement, probably sooner, possibly sooner. So uh, this person says, according to on-chain analytics, uh, let's see, we'll click that, uh, the platform CryptoQuant. CryptoQuant is pretty good. It's kind of like glass nodes. And he's saying that thousands of coins are waking up as Bitcoin challenges 70K again. I think the key there is waking up and they'll be looking for signs of breakdown in case in case it's a triple top. You know, we never know, but um, our indicator is one of the big advantages of using Crypto Mastery is that uh, we have the setups that uh, really did tell us. They told us exactly the top in the last market cycle high and the bottom in the summer of 2021, and also when to get back in the market in January of 2022. So I have specific indicators that are part of Crypto Mastery. If you're watching the replay, by the way, you can learn more about these at CryptoMastery.org. These are the backbone of what we use and teach here at Moonstream. So jumping back over to this, um, I, you know, certainly if these certain types, the certain setups happen, we'll be telling everyone, get out. I'm happy to review that again today, and we can look at the uh, three or four indicators that if that were to happen in this uh, push towards 70,000, we'd say, all right, it's a triple top. Uh, that was it, everybody. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, we have to be open to the fact that anything's possible. Okay. And so we'll look at that in a minute. Let's see. We have uh, some old tranches of Bitcoin moving on chain. Basically, all that means is they've been on cold storage wallets and uh, not on the exchanges where it's easier to sell. Typically, people move their coins from the cold storage wallets, uh, cold storage wallets and uh, on chain uh, to, for the purpose of selling on the exchanges. So, um, you know, let's uh, in getting into circulations. I, I don't think that happens, but we always want to keep an eye on that. So we have 2000 Bitcoin with the same age. Um, I think this is really non-news. Let's look at it anyway and put a little checkbox, uh, a minor one. You guys know I'm always saying, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. I'm not seeing that in the markets charts right now. The total market cap is a bit concerning. We're going to look at that in a minute. And uh, so let's just kind of skim over this. We've got a few news articles and then we'll dive into the charts. Okay. So with that, there's something they're using called the spent. This is the uh, SOPR typically indicator of the spent output age bands. I guess this is a little bit different. I don't do a lot of on-chain metrics because I find that it's just not reliable. And uh, I went head to head with a, an expert in on-chain metrics at the Bitcoin 2022 conference. And uh, he said we were uh, would not go below 30K. And I challenged him. Some of you know the story, the editor of Bitcoin Magazine, 
Dylan LeClaire was adamant we wouldn't go below 30,000. And I said, I think we are. And of course, I was right. So um, I think the charts tell us the bigger story and certainly our indicators give us that edge. So, um, but let's worth noting and realizing this, I just wouldn't spend, it, it'll, there's enough information to absorb and gather and, uh, you know, process as it is rather than go deep into on-chain metrics. So basically it's saying these uh, on-chain for the first time in between two and three years, you know, these are the weaker hands. And so I wouldn't be surprised to see some of these moving, but uh, they, we just don't know. They could be moving from one wallet to another. And uh, so let's keep going. The stationary four or five years, even larger. So four or five years, you know, we still have the Mt. Gox coins that were released in bankruptcy. And those, of course, are the 10-year. Those are going to be at least 10 years um, back into that age range. 2014 is when Mt. Gox, right around there, when that imploded. So, you know, those are likely going to get absorbed on chain. I think that uh, they are being absorbed by the ETFs and also some other companies like Tesla and, of course, Michael strategy as we call them michael saylor from micro strategy short version michael strategy uh there are going to be um other companies and pension funds and hedge funds i just saw an article recently on that and i i don't remember the name but they said yes they are buying bitcoin so we have to keep in mind that um at some point there's going to be institutional fomo to get into this and it's probably not far away so let's uh, skim this i think this is almost misinformation not intentionally but we should not be afraid that this is because it's going to be a top. Anyway, point made, old coins moving after old coins moving after old coins moving is what this person says. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. It, it says distribution, but it's not going down. And that's key. So we're seeing some really bullish things happening too that I posted in our M3 Active Trader this morning. Maybe we'll pull that up. So again, this is crypto quant. A lot of um, I I won't say I'm not going to say useless. I'm just going to say um, not entirely usable for um, the masses and the average crypto investor. So that's why we rely on the charts, and uh, that served us well over the years, as you guys know. Uh, let's see. So um, let's it, this happens fairly regularly, but the latest stage of the Bitcoin bull run has seen an uptick in frequency, and um, let's just see uh, all time highs seventy three eight hundred. Let's see, inactivity. We've covered the point of this. I don't want to unpack it too much here. And we could go down a rabbit hole. We could spend a whole hour on this, but that's not the point of this class here. And uh, so we've kind of covered the bases on that. Let me just see if there's any other news down below. And uh, hash ribbons. Okay, that's interesting. So this is all, always interesting to pull up. Uh, the hash ribbons is an indicator that is uh, fairly useful because it shows the miners and we have looked at that in previous classes, so we'll look at that uh, this class as well. Hash ribbons flashing the first buy signal since the 25k buy price. So even though you know that last article was signifying some whales might be selling, it's it's not the the overall um, movement. The wind is at our back with this, with the election cycle coming, with the having and uh, having had just occurred, and also political. Uh, indications, um, at least uh, recently, that in favor of crypto, uh, although the current administration recently vetoed the crypto-friendly bill, so it's going to be it's going to be a point of interest in the election for sure. So uh, this person says uh, Bitcoin's going a lot higher, and hodlers may not need to wait for summer to be over for sky-high Bitcoin price gains. Yeah, you know, we just don't know. I am seeing some interesting movement on Bitcoin that we want to pay attention to. But I'm not seeing it on the total market cap. And the iBit was flashing this morning that there was sell pressure. Just we'll hop over here for a minute and, and see what that was. So actually, the iBit four hour, I may have misread that. This is a bullish signal. This is using our ERI Pro. And we have a nice buy block. And on the average true range, the average true range, which you can see here, shows exit and entry signals is uh, flagging green. So this is this is very bullish for Bitcoin. And we're just not seeing broad market participation right now. That's okay. I think Bitcoin will be the leader of this uh, next move higher. And so we'll have to keep that in mind. Okay, so what I'm going to do is kill the camera, though. I think it may be a bit of a delay. And uh, that way we're not overlapping any charts with this. And uh, let's just see. We have chat saying confirming you guys can see. Great. 
Okay, so let's keep going. But this is bullish signal, and uh, we're gonna get we're gonna get to the charts very fast. I promise. So the hash ribbons, um, we'll come back to that. But uh, this basically indicates that the miners are saying that this is a good time to be getting in, and the hash ribbon indicator. I guess I could pull it up here for you guys. Um, we will let me turn off our indicators here momentarily, and we will come back to this. I do like that fact that the Bollinger bands. Our Bollinger Band uh, indicator is tightening. So typically when you see that, it looks like pinching fingers. It means a big move is coming. And um, I think this is, we are about to push higher uh, right around the 70,000 range because typically you see it break on the third or the fifth attempt. Now we are pushing up for the fifth attempt, <clears throat> excuse me, at 72,000, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. I did talk about that last week where we pushed up Touch that upper, upper Bollinger Band. Typically, this is a take profit uh, area, a reversal area. So we came down again. We have the makings of a push higher here. We have a bounce on the TSI. I'm getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, on this daily Bitcoin chart, it's looking very bullish. So with that in mind, I'm going to go up under here, and uh, we're going to pull up the uh, hash ribbon indicator because I said that I would. And I'll explain what this means. Uh, there's two things this means. So basically, if we zoom out on this, and let me just hide these other ones for now. I'll put these back in a moment, I promise, and our order block detector and even our rocket. So just using the hash ribbon indicators. So you see these blue buttons down here that says buy. I'll just open up that indicator. This has typically referred to a level that would not be broken. So if this says buy, typically we would not we would not go back down on below that price again. Now, why are we, um, okay, the numbers are on the hash ribbon. Ignore, these are not Bitcoin prices, obviously. The best signals come, however, okay, after we see capitulation. Now, capitulation is when the miners start selling their Bitcoin. Why would they do that? Well, because they have to pay for their energy, they have to pay for their mining rigs, and uh, when they feel that it's no longer profitable and prices are dipping below in these red zones, we see these red, green dots that say capitulation. The miners are capitulating. They're selling their Bitcoin to stay in business, essentially, to wait for the right time. And often when the buy signal happens, you can see that this is when the, the miners are starting to buy and it typically proceeds you know, sometimes it takes a while, typically proceeds movements higher in the markets. Now, I don't use it as a buy signal specifically because we saw it go buy here, market sold off, sold off, sold off, a little bit more capitulation back in the 16.5 range, which I predicted uh, in, you know, all the way back here when we were up around 40,000, I had forecast 16.5. But on the second buy signal, that was a good one. I mostly use it, however, as a level of, hey, we will not go below this level again, I don't think we'll ever go below 16.5. I don't think we'll go below 25, 26 because of this. That's the way to read the hash ribbon indicator. Now, if we fast forward here, we are still bidding capitulation. Uh, I don't know why they are saying the buy uh, indicator has triggered. Let's find out. I don't know. They, they may be right. They may be wrong. So basically, Bitcoin miners have been forced to readjust since April's block subsidy basically because they are it's twice as hard to mine Bitcoin and their processing power has had to double to mine a single Bitcoin. So that's why the hash rate has cooled and consolidating lower. This uh, is this person saying for a Capriol founder saying this is standard for miners though as they adjust to a new economic reality. And so basically they're getting a little bit ahead of the buy signal. They're saying the hash ribbon's dropping into a new capitulation phase and so they're saying that in and of itself is the buy signal. And so, you know, I think they're, they're trying to get a little bit of attention by being early. That has not actually triggered yet, but uh, it is typically traditionally a long term buy signal when the hash ribbons is tempting with the minor capitulation, which started two weeks ago. So I see what they're saying. So, yeah, so they're, they're saying the capitulations are happening and this uh, metric kind of means that old efficient mining hardware becomes obsolete, no longer profitable to run, costs exceed their revenues 
from the block reward. So they're saying, all right, screw it. This doesn't work anymore. Time to go uh, get a job at McDonald's and flip some hamburgers or reinvest more money into some big, fancier ASIC rigs. And typically, you know, that's something they'll do over several weeks. And, uh, you know, the ones that are serious, but these are expensive and they typically only do that when they feel, hey, we're about to have a move higher. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And uh, so I'm just going to skim the rest of this. We've already shown that in the prices. So it hints at, let's see, Bitcoin battles, key resistance, trader fly 100K. I've been saying 100K is imminent and virtually guaranteed for some time. And I think we go to 155K this cycle, whether it's this year or next year and possibly 250 in this current cycle. So, but uh, here is also important to note because we're putting check marks uh, in our mind, what's going on here. The summer usually gets a bit uh, low volume, cools off. You know, we might have a little rally in June, July. Often we see some sell pressure like we did in July of 2021, which gave us a great buy opportunity with our indicators. Because if you guys remember, uh, going back to July, I'm just going to can't turn off this uh, hash ribbon. I'll put on our ERI Pro, especially on the weekly time frame. If we go back in time, back to July of 2021, of course, we uh, nailed that right in uh, here. Actually, it's on the uh, weekly, sorry, the daily time frame, I believe. But uh, weekly has been very good to us as well. So if we zoom out, I remember this distinctively like it was yesterday. Had that big sell-off in uh, Bitcoin and... Let's see, is this the daily? It looks a little bit odd. Okay, I, I here it is. I'm sorry. Right back in here. You see that green signal there right in July of 2021. We had it on the daily and the weekly. So we caught this bounce and we caught this bounce here in September. So so those pullbacks can be great buying opportunities. And certainly on the weekly, we like that a lot because we were using this all the way back September of 2023 last year. We caught this as a buy signal and uh, caught the AI move based on this uh, ERI. And so where we are now, uh, we are seeing, so, you know, kind of pushing up toward that 70K pressure point. But the reason I'm mentioning that is that, let's going back, this is the weekly time frame. Uh, on the uh, daily, we see this higher lows when we see this kind of pushing up higher with our trend strength indicator also signaling it's ready to go higher with our uh, RSI. So let's see, I'm going to open these back up there. Mostly the TSI and the RSI. These are part of our pro pack indicators that give us those signals. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, let's go back to the news and we'll put that away. We'll dive back into the charts here and a little bit closer. I'm not going to pull up this uh, crypto quant um, sin, uh, s chart there. Basically, it, um, let's see, you lull, kickstart the impulse, given the data on hand, also not necessity. So basically, we're looking for a catalyst, any catalyst to push this market higher. Uh, it's certainly possible, though, that there is buying happening on the ETFs that's uh, being supplied by some of the the uh, Mt. Gox Bitcoin. You know, the government is still selling some Bitcoin and, you know, likely that's happening and what's cooling off that $70,000 level. There's not a lot of rhyme or reason in this. And so, um, you know, that's likely happening. And when the sell pressure ends is when we really start to push much higher. All right, let's take a look at the daily hodl here. A Bitcoin flashing signal, the foreshadowed Massive stock market rally in the 1980s. Uh, I just have to pause and say, what is he talking about? Bitcoin was not around in the 1980s, obviously. <laughs> I don't know. This is maybe a misprint, unless it's a chart pattern. Uh, legendary trader Peter Brandt. Oh, so he's that, that's that's what I figured. He was comparing a chart, and he's saying that the chart pattern looks similar to the one of the stock market in 1980s. So let's just look at this. So we have an inverse head and shoulders is what he's talking about. Um, okay, that's that's worth noting. I hadn't uh, seen that. And I I don't know, maybe on a weekly time frame we can see it a little bit better, but it's it's not really it's not really an inverse head and shoulders. Let me see what they're talking about. I love the head and shoulders pattern. It's a very small one. I mean it's possible. This was, let's see, Bitcoin, US, okay, so it's overlaid Bitcoin and US stock market. And it looks somewhat similar. I did, uh, that's the, the head and shoulders is how I call the last market cycle top. And those of you that remember that when we were back here in 2022, it was a big old head and shoulders. I'll go to a weekly chart and uh, showed people thought I was crazy and they were using all of their Elliott wave analysis to show we were going higher. 
But uh, but no, I said no. We have, we have head and shoulders here, and that's uh, back in twenty twenty one, and uh, certainly there we had one. Uh, all right, let me do this differently. Sometimes these uh, arrows are not easy to use. So like now, apparently, uh, you guys can see it because once you once you see, it, you cannot unsee it. Uh, the only reason I show this not not to be right all the time is I'm showing this is that the simple indicators are often the best. Head and shoulders. Look at that. I was one of the first people. If you go to, to my um, trading view channel, you can scroll back and see that uh, on trading. Let's see if you just Google my name. Uh, guys, th this is not for my ego purposes. This is because I want you to be have a trust level that I, you know, we've got, I know what I'm doing and we've been pretty good about, been very good at calling these market swings. Uh, I'd rather that you have that confidence to see that so that so we can help you. That's why. So basically scrolling back here, going farther back to this, uh, we have, uh, let's see, date wise, 2023. I got to go back even farther, probably back here to 2023 is Bitcoin bottom end. I got to go even farther for the head and shoulders call. You can find all of these and you can go back and see if I was right on this because these once you can't change them once they are set up. Here we go. Bitcoin weekly head and shoulders incomplete 60% pullback from all time high. Still hap, still likely. That was July 11th, 2021. All right. And they even prior to that, I was saying in June of 2021, that Bitcoin likely heading to 25K to 20K from here. So that I, I called that in June of 2021. And certainly we did go below that somewhere publicly. I said 16.5. So uh, Bitcoin weekly head and shoulders bearish engulfing candle. So this was even earlier, June 20th on 2021. So you can see these, these signals are often the best and that's why I'm sharing that with you. So do we have, do we have a, an inverse head and shoulders? I think, you know, if it was a little bit deeper, but uh, I don't see it. Uh, I don't see it on the weekly. This is sort of a shoulder, <laughs> but um, you know, is it a head and shoulders on the weekly? That's a stretch. That's a stretch. I don't know. I don't see it, you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call uh, inconclusive on this one. So basically, uh, let's not dive into this too much more. That's just comparing to the stock market, which is very, very different. Well, let's talk about who governs Ethereum. Galaxy uh, Digital Report reveals. Now, that's just interesting. So Galaxy Digital reveals Ethereum. Decentralized governance avoids on-chain voting. Let's see. This is something we want to dive into I don't uh, really want to right now. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to go into the Roaring Kitty GameStop position, but uh, this is a crypto class, crypto mastery. And, you know, this is something you guys can, I'm sure you've heard about. So uh, let's see, Bitcoin, any other news here? I don't see any there. I've got a couple more articles uh, to cover with you, and then we'll dive into the charts. Futures premium hit seven week high. Is the rally sustainable? So the reason this is important, you know, the, the as a lot of this is, is driven by derivatives now. Options on ETFs, futures on the spot on the ETFs. Bitcoin flirted with 70K on June 3rd, but traders feared excessive leverage might be a double-edged sword. If you have to remember that Bitcoin will do what hurts, causes the most pain in the markets, and that's because there's financial incentive, especially now with futures, which is highly leveraged, and the uh, new ETFs, and of course, there are options like the Biddy and the Biddo on these uh, on these instruments. So, when open interest is highest, that means there is incentive for the whales and other large holders to basically uh, go after that and push the price in the opposite direction. So, if that makes sense, and so basically, what does it mean for the sustainability of uh, Bitcoin's rally towards seventy k, guys? Uh, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. We've already covered this. Fifth time is a charm. We're going to break through. If we're going to break 70K, we're going to do it on this prop, on this push higher. I, I hear, hear what I'm saying. Uh, I'm highly confident in that. And again, we had once. And uh, if we put the chart level on at 70K, let's just do that for, for visualization so you guys can see what I mean. I'll move that up a little bit. And in all fairness, we want to be right at that 70 K level just above. So once this was a fake out, I did predict that as well. I said we'd push up and we drop down. We did that um, in our M3 class. Second time, third time, didn't make it the third, third time. So I've been saying fourth time, probably not going to last. I think this rally, I think this Bitcoin rally will break 70K. My issue is the rest of the market 
is not looking strong. So it just means that Bitcoin may lead this next rally, and that would not be surprising. So we want to watch. What I'm looking for specifically is a close. I want to see a close above 72,000. And ultimately, you can see I already have my alert here, a Bitcoin crossing up and a close above 75K. That is when this thing starts to go parabolic. And on another chart, we can see that where the new slope I'll talk about that more in our, our M3 Trader class. If you're not already in our other classes, you can learn more at moonstream.io and sign up for our newsletter. We've got some excellent picks in our monthly newsletter, the Crypto Mastery Indicators, as I'm showing here today. And of course, our M3 Active Trader class, which is where I go through all of these things. And you can learn more about it on our website or just go to moonstream.io slash M3. The indicators are included. You get weekly classes with me like this on Wednesdays and daily access. I post daily in a private chat and we have a very active community in here. Smart traders in there sharing information and doing Wednesday class with Q&A. Uh, you get all the indicators included, a membership area. This is our highest level training for active traders, plus interactive PDFs like the interactive portfolio tracker, our dollar cost average trading template is normally reserved for my private clients. And that uh, you can read who this is for investors interested in more frequent trading opportunities. People want more hands-on training from an experienced trading and mentor. Guys, I've been trading since 1999 when E-Trade was a green screen and a flashing cursor. And all this class is also for more risk tolerant traders who want to maximize gains during this bull run and minimize losses. And uh, so you can learn more about that uh, on this page here. Plus these bonuses, high probability candlestick chart patterns and other things like high probability trading patterns. And there's DCA worksheets. Here's a picture showing actually trade. All right. Uh, you can learn more here, including the indicators, which you get for free. Lots of pages and pages of uh, uh, the testimonials that we haven't even added to for years because we have so many of them. Uh, we should probably start doing more of that. And you get a one hour private session with me if you sign up here. And this week for M3 Active Trader, you can find out more at M3, sorry, moonstream.io slash M3. Okay, guys, let's dive back into it and then we'll get to some charts here. So this, we talked about that already. We talked about, you know, this flirting with 70K. Um, you, you know, I, let's let's just talk about this. I don't really care about GameStop mania necessarily for crypto, but um, let's see the weaker odds of a Fed rate interest rate cuts is what caught my eye here. You know, that will certainly slow things down, could slow things down. Although, you know, they at some point they're going to start quantitative easing and pumping money back in these markets. Why? Because we can't afford our own interest rate debt service. We're going to have to, and we're going to have to start dropping rates at some point, either that or printing a whole shit ton of money. All right. Now, this person says the Bitcoin price jump partly influenced by GameStop's impressive rally. I don't I don't know. Let's see. Uh, and she sent on this challenge. This, this is, you know, not causal, but maybe uh, coincidental or somewhat related in terms of sentiment. And yeah, so that's what it's saying. The sentiment appears to have spilled over into the meme coin sector. Floki, dog with that bonk, all of these. Yeah, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, I'm not averse to meme coins. But we talk about those specifically in our M3 Active Trader class and a couple that we're watching there, including Brett Token uh, on the base chain. All right. So let's see. There's more here. Bitcoin premium futures reflect difference between monthly contracts, derivatives. You know, this is probably going to make your brain hurt. Uh, this um, is the TLDR. The derivative support supports further price gains. And I, let's not get into why right now. I We could dissect that, but it's not why we're here. We're here to uh, teach you guys how to use the crypto mastery indicators. We can talk more about that in tomorrow's M3 Active Trader class because there's some other stuff going on in there that I think is more important. Let's talk about Solana. Emerges as an institutional favorite. So of course, uh, we were early to Solana. Had called Solana in August of 2021, August 1st to be exact. So uh, we were very, very early on that. And uh, that was my recommendation in the Moonstream newsletter all the way back here and i'll show you exactly when it happened right there around uh, it was august i'm hitting my alert there but it was right in here august of 2021 right around 35 dollars. there was a little pullback back here and i said guys solana is going to pull back to 35 that's our buy point and boom we shot up 657 percent 
course, the whole market sold off, but we were getting people into talking about Solana back in here. So it's had a nice run. And I think it easily goes to 200. Um, I think, you know, in the short term, I think this could go to a thousand this market cycle. Um, why? Simply because I think Solana will be worth 15% of Ethereum always. And I think ETH could go to 15K this run. So even if we knock that down a bit, um, you know, I still think Solana has much higher price targets and, and could go as high as 3000 on Solana. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see you guys. Uh, just jumping back over here to talk about this. Um, this is an institutional favorite. So this is good following the PayPal launch. So, yeah, so they're doing a deal with PayPal. And as you may remember, that Solana was doing a test uh, for Visa and sort of well, went quiet, but we didn't hear anything bad. So we know that that is somewhat working and that that's going to be good. Mass adoption, Solana, you know, venture backed, all these reasons Solana is going to win. And they're the, the, the leader in transactions per second. And they also have Fire Dancer coming out relatively soon. And I'm going to put my, um, my video back on here just for a little bit. Uh, Fire Dancer, of course, is a third-party app that on the Solana, Solana blockchain let layer two that's claiming that they'll be able to do 500,000 to a million transactions per second. So let that sink in for a minute. That will be game over or they will win. And um, that all leads to monetization. And this is transactions that are uh, you know much less cost than Ethereum gas fees, but still generating revenue. So that's worth noting and exciting for Solana. Okay, so what else do we see here? Uh, we see increasingly, uh, well, this is, yeah, let's talk about this too. The total value locked is becoming a leader, leading network. And um, this is where, you know, it also transaction speeds. And and as far as volume going through the Ethereum bridge, Solana is, is now ahead of Ethereum. So all of this leads toward mass adoption. And this is basically saying they're future proofing their offerings. So this is good. Solana institutions make sense. Industry leaders like, PayPal, Stripe, and Visa, as I mentioned, are must future-proof their offerings as well. The best way for them to do that is meeting their most forward-thinking users on the platforms they're adopting. So basically, this is saying signaling that Solana is positioning perfectly with institutions to be the key partner there. Uh, so really, really keep that in mind. Um, I have most of my, my IRA is in Solana. I moved over from Ethereum, and I think that eventually, eventually they'll probably get an ETF but even if they don't, it doesn't matter. I think institutions and uh, institutional demand will really drive that. All right. So basically, PayPal, uh, we talked about, uh, it expanded their stable coin to the Solana network. This is mass adoption. This is adoption happening right before our eyes, everybody. So really, it's exciting. It's history in the, make in the making. So, and I'll also mention that this will enable Solana users to conduct inexpensive transactions using PYUSD aiming to broaden the stablecoin's utility, another way of saying adoption for everyday purchases. Um, you know, the, the mass of the curve of early adopters, you know, early adopters, and then uh, you know, so the innovators, early adopters, and then the early majority, we are nowhere near early majority yet because this is too early. The masses are not going to want to or be able to write down 12 key phrases. Uh, we have to make this easier. So adopting and integrating with PayPal is a big step forward. All right. As I mentioned, okay, so uh, they're saying what I was just saying. Uh, Visa launched USD coin. Sure, it's a stable coin, but it's on Solana. And it's the second network to support the stable coin after Ethereum. So again, we're, we're just looking for more people, network effect, growing, growing the ecosystem, all good. All right. Uh, let's see. More institutional adoption. Fireblocks. Uh, now, Fireblocks, that's related to Fire Dancer somehow, right? So that's what I talked about as well. So scalable blockchain networks can handle large amounts of transactions. So not only large amounts, but fast. So the reason Solana took off back in 2021 is they promised 50,000 transactions per second. And uh, now other competitors are pushing those numbers up. But uh, with the Fire Dancer and Fireblocks, they're going to be seeing massive increases in speed. So sure, Solana has theoretical th throughput of 65,000 TPS for short, and an average transaction costs of 0 0.0025 is nothing compared to Ethereum, and Ethereum's slow. So if you don't know this, Ethereum, 15 transactions per second. So, and, uh, you know, it, with the uh, gas fees over a dollar, up to over $50 during congestion, like back when we had meme coin mania, 
and also NFTs. Ethereum is not a good platform for transactions. And, uh, and so increasingly that I think they're going to lose that game uh, for network adoption and building on top of Ethereum. Sure. But they're going to need to come up with something to get those transaction speeds up. But anyway, uh, let's see. So we have vice president of Fireblocks. This is the developer of Fire Dancer, I would imagine, although they don't name it. Um, so we don't need to go down that road. Already. If you can Google that, a lot of information about Fire Dancer. Is the Solana ETF next? Now, there's a lot of mixed um, thoughts about this. So, uh, you know, I don't know. Let's not let's not get into pure speculation. Uh, I think we've covered this and let's keep going here. Fire Dancer. So I talked about that. So I'll just talk on the Solana. We see Anatoly's vision of single atomic state machine as a powerful use case of decentralized blockchains, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we had activity in Q4 2023, deep in one of the hot narratives we've talked about in our retire rich classes and also M3, decentralized physical infrastructure, one of the strong narratives this cycle. Uh, DeFi, of course, still there, still evolving. Meme coins, you know, um, there's, there's not, here's the thing with meme, meme coins. Um, Coinbase on their base chain, their goal is to onboard a billion new users to crypto. And the easiest way for them to do that is with meme coins. And so you're seeing a ton of meme coins coming out on the base ecosystem base is part of coinbase and so even if they only get 200 million new people on to the crypto sort of industry and ecosystem uh, that these that's sort of the gateway drug meme coins gateway drugs get them on starting to buy crypto as things get easier it will lead to early majority mass adoption so that's why it's important uh, nft innovations um, uh, one of the companies that we like in our retire rich class is developing the next generation of uh, artificial intelligence or I NFTs, think of animated NFTs. I uh, won't reveal that here. That's for our paid members. You can learn more about it on mainstream.io and our uh, retire rich uh, button there. And of course, Fire Dancer is that uh, transaction per second innovation on Solana that I mentioned. Okay, how are we doing on time, you guys? Uh, let's see, we're doing okay. Let's, yeah, we're doing about, we're, uh, let's move over onto the charts. I think it's a good time to do that. And I'll close the rest of these things here. So, uh, any questions, you guys? I don't. I don't see one in the chat, so I'll put that up real quick. And so, question from Rick: Will Saul reduce the three point three percent PayPal fees? That's a great question, Rick. Um, you know, that is one of the down the disadvantages of using PayPal, and um, is those uh, those fees and from a merchant standpoint and from the uh, end user standpoint. So, um, I think that's why this is such a great innovation because as a merchant ourselves. And using PayPal, um, also MasterCard and Visa charges around 3% overall. You know, that eats at the bottom line. Why? Why do that? I think Solana will make a huge dent. And uh, some of you know I'm building a SaaS CRM. One of the reasons we've integrated uh, Bitcoin and crypto transactions is to reduce those fees and for the merchant because it adds up, especially if you have very busy business. All right, you guys, let's uh, put this away uh, on the, the chart. Um, so let me go high level on Bitcoin here. And let's see, Bitcoin not overvalued yet. So we can talk about that. Uh, so, but look at this chart here on this daily. It is trying to push higher. Bitcoin currently is up over 2,000 points. Guys, I think we're about to have a breakout on Bitcoin. Uh, I can see that. I'm confident in that just for the reason of the rising EMAs, exponential moving averages. Uh, my, my video window, I'm moving around here a bit, but this is the time we're going to break up. That's the fifth attempt. We're going to break 71,000. I would suggest um, we'll, we'll have some specific buy recommendations tomorrow in our M3 class. I don't do them in this class. I think this is very bullish. And I think if we close above 71,500, look for a massive breakout here after this. And so on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin will lead the rest of the market. Looking at ETH here, um, ETH, you know, had already had its pump with that ETF news. I think it's just going to have to settle out, consolidate a bit, and um, maybe push higher. I was suggesting we come back in the thirty six hundred range. I don't know that it was. I think it from here, the longer it goes sideways and consolidates above this uh, twenty one day EMA, the stronger likelihood is it continues higher. And a bit of a messy chart here. I do want to go back to the Bitcoin weekly chart, uh, which is also flirting with that 72K level. And for some reason, our indicators are not on here. So let me just load those on. One of the cool things is you can have templates here. And I'll just pull up my templates 
of saved indicators of our 2024 Pro Pack indicators. And at the push of a button, you can see those are all loading for us. And I'm gonna put my video away. Let me know if the video is, is covering anything important. So what do we see here, guys? Even on the weekly time frame, we have those Bollinger Bands tightening and we have the TSI turning higher. We did have the RSI bullish divergence back in this range here, plus the ERI Pro buy block. This is looking very good, you guys. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Uh, this is a time to be very seriously be thinking about getting back into these markets. Uh, let me see, though. I want to... I want to add because those exponential moving averages for me are very telling. So I'm going to add those on here. And I know I have it on some of the other charts already opened, but let's do it together, shall we? So hopping over to this, I need to pull out the, um, let's see, I got a lot of memory going, getting sucked out of this here at the moment. I'm going to turn on the inputs here. That's a 21 EMA. So that's good. Okay, right. That is my default on my second EMA. I'm going to make that a 50. And we're going to want to make that uh, dark green just to keep that consistent. And boom, there we are. Okay, so what do we see here, everybody? So I like that we are, you know, solidly, we've been riding the 21-day EMA all the way up. Uh, this is providing more support. If we do have another pullback, I do believe it will hold at this EMA. But I think we're, we're ready to break above. And, and on a break above, we would likely come back down and retest what we want to see is a flip to retest 71.5 or 72K as support. But so far, looking good on this weekly time frame. I'm glad we looked at that. We'll unpack this more and more detail tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. So you will want to be there if you're not already involved. Uh, perfect timing to get involved. We have monthly and quarterly options. It includes the indicators and includes daily commentators for me, as well as a live weekly class on Wednesday where we deep dive into all of this. And we look at coin pits, picks, et cetera. Okay, so basically on Solana, also looking pretty strong here on the daily time frame. Look, I see bullish divergence down here. I see the TSI, not quite sure what it's going to do yet. Uh, it's, uh, you know, maybe a little bit early, but I like that we see on the daily. You no, know, it is, it, it looks good here on, on this time frame. The TSI, this is also partially a training of our indicators. Trend strength indicator, we want to see a break above 20. So we're not there yet. We could get there end of the day or tomorrow. But we do have, look at this, you guys. We have a rocket forming on Solana on the daily time frame. I'm going to hide the E, the RSI, because it's not giving us a lot of data, but I'd like that we have an ERI TSI cross and we have Bollinger Bands tightening. Hold on to your hats and helmets, everybody. Button your chin straps. Things are about to get exciting. What do we see here? And if you're not familiar with the rocket, this is one of our custom indicators. What it means is you have a little bit of a wick. Uh, we call it rocket on the launch pad. And the, rock, the launch pad is the, 21 day EMA typically, or the 50 day EMA. Sometimes it's a prior, prior support, but look at this. We're right on the 21 day EMA. Um, now the, it just sold off a tick. So the rocket indicator went away. We want to see that it closes as a rocket to confirm. We do have a lot of sell pressure overhead. So I don't want to get too excited. I would wait on Solana for dollar cost averaging or buying more. I would wait till the end of the day's closing candle. And if we have a TSI over 20, if we have a rocket confirming, then it would be time to get in. We do have a, a green ERI though. So I'm, I'm liking Solana. I'm pretty much all in on my allocation already, but uh, this is one to watch. Once we clear 215 or 220, it's off to the races. So there's a bit of sell pressure overhead, but it still looks good to me for those reasons and because of our indicators on that. Now I do want to talk briefly about some um, the where's my my time frame so this is bitcoin one hour four hour by the way uh and we'll look at let me mo open this up so we're back to bitcoin um i want to share with you some of the other indicators that give us excellent uh, signals on the shorter time frames so we have the bollinger band pro when it touches the upper bollinger band that's a sell signal because invariably it reverts to the mean either goes sideways or in this case it'll sold off and often it'll go all the way to the other side of the bollinger band do you see that let me turn off the ATR so you guys can see this. Even if you've seen and are using our indicators, this is such a powerful one. Let me go full screen. The Bollinger Band. Now, this most Bollinger Bands are wrong. They're using the wrong settings. Ours uses the right settings for crypto, as you can see. 
And so when you see a vertical red line, that is a sell signal to take partial profits, wait for another buy signal or lower prices. So we've had two back to back. This would be another sell signal came down, a buy signal on a lower Bollinger Band. When we see green signals, it means that it's gone oversold all the way down here. And that was a good time to get back in. The reason I'm showing you this on a four hour time frame, however, is the dynamic ATR, which is part of the indicator bundle that you can find at cryptomastery.org and uh, one of the upsells there. So basically we see when we turn off the Bollinger Band, those of you that know, you know that uh, when we turn off the order blocks and I'll turn off the Bollinger Bands, all I'm looking at is this dynamic ATR. When it flips from exit to entry, you always have a nice little rally in Bitcoin, but from exit to entry had a nice rally here, consolidated for a while on the four hour. We've just gone into entry mode. Uh, you can also use this as your dynamic trailing stop. Okay, if you're long, when it breaks below the ATR, that's when you would take profits or use as a stop. I think we're we're looking at all signs are looking at a bullish move here on Bitcoin. Okay, and uh, I am always careful not to use my own confirmation bias. Of just reading what I see here. Let's take a look at the volatility index as well. This is part of the the uh, base package here. Essentially, it's excellent for four hour time frames when it gets oversold and down in here, and it comes up into the black. Almost always, invariably, it it marks a new a new push higher. I was listening to a video by Joe today earlier, and he had he just kept harping on how confluence is so important. I coined a new term: confluence is cash. It's a little corny, but look at this. We had great confluence through here. We had the the volatility index going from red to black above that twenty line. Boom, and then we had we had in of almost the same time the TSI went above red to green above 20 right in here we had the signal line go green the signal line gives you more of an indication that the trend will continue then we had the atr also go into entry mode i imagine the eri also triggered in here so those of you that are familiar that time it didn't but those of you who are familiar uh we did have our order blocks so with our trade success checklist Okay, you can get that for free at uh, our website, moonstream.io, if you don't have it already. The Trader Success Checklist right here, it's an interactive PDF where you can check off when these various things are happening and gives you a trade success score. And in this case, we would have had, if we go back in time here, we would have had excellent score. We would have had one for the vol index, we would have had one for the signal, one for the TSI, one for the dynamic average true range and another one coming out of our buy blocks. So that would have been a score of trade score five out of 21. I usually buy in at two or three on that scale and add to the positions as more of them fire. So keep that in mind. I am, I am saying I think we have a bullish move coming in for Bitcoin as per the four hour and daily charts. Okay. Uh, one thing we need to do though, let's jump ahead. Uh, I want to hop over to uh this is just some news here we'll get out of this uh, and um i want to go to a monthly chart of bitcoin because we did just have a monthly close so it's important we keep an eye on that and see what the monthly candles are saying and uh, so i uh, you know this this is very interesting because what do we we had this bearish engulfing candle uh and two months ago and that was obvious that was per the name bearish and i was a little bit concerned but we'd see a deep pullback. So we have this bearish engulfing candle. What I am starting to come to the conclusion, and another reason why you need these pro pack indicators, these big green pastel green blocks are order flow. And, and I believe my theory is that we once we see these on a longer time frame, we will not go down below them. Big, we could we saw a big order flow buy block in here. Look at that, it held that 16K region to a T as well as the buy orders. And then we had another buy block of money flow here. So at 20,000. And so the reason, and then we had one at 50,000. So it also held, look at this, the monthly candle in April held above this order block. So what do we have here? This specific candle pattern, by the way, if we can close above this this month, it's called the three inside up. It is one of the patterns inside the trade success checklist you want to pay attention to. Uh, you can Google what that means, but a three inside up would invalidate this bearish engulfing candle and in further point toward we go much higher. And I do believe we are putting in a new uh, new slant on the full trajectory, which is the hallmark of the parabolic phase of the market. We'll talk about that more tomorrow in the 
M3 Active Trader class, but I did want to show that and pull that up. Okay. So uh, with that in mind, um, the, the IBIT again, starting to push higher, looking bullish on the four hour. Let's see, Bitcoin, Ethereum, this is some news, uh, you know, the supply may have a supply squeeze coming into these markets as well. That would certainly be interesting. And um, if those of you that remember, uh, maybe I'll just pull it up again. If we go to Fred Fogel trading view, I want to pull up the um, study that I did, the hypothesis on how to get to 150, 155,000. Maybe I'll pull up the chart. I think that might be easier. We'll certainly look at it tomorrow. But this is one on the trading view. Uh, I've been here, this one, update on the path to 100K, 150K. Now I've revised this a little bit based on recent price action, but let's just take, let's take a look at the top 10 reasons. And you can follow this, see if I was right later. Uh, when I put it on here, let's just play and see how this played out. I don't know if I can move these. I'll hit the play. And the prices have deviated slightly, but pay attention to the factors that could get us to 100K, 150K Bitcoin. Uh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll actually load that chart. It'll be a little bit less uh, confusing on here. And I want to just close this. I don't know if I had, all right, I'll close that down. All right, bear with me. I'm almost finished here. I'm going to load up a chart that um, will show us exactly what I'm talking about there. And the Bitcoin path to 155,000. Okay, so basically what we're talking about here is, let me just check the chat really quickly. Uh, Susie says, yeah, the rocket, watch for that rocket at the end of the day, Susie. It disappeared right on in front of our eyes. All right, so what um, we have here, let me open this up for you guys and go full screen. There you go. So what this says is, now these things are all covering my, okay. So the potential path to 155K Bitcoin. Now I modified the blue bars a bit because we had that deeper pullback right in here. Okay, you see that? Now these blue bars are the, copy of this move here in the last bull market and i just sort of made them fit a little bit better so this puts us at 100k bitcoin by september um i always suggest we might go much higher faster but with all of the economic things that are happening interest rates and um etc that put a damper on the uh, move so now my projection is we come up we break above the 70k uh in, in this in this uh you know major very closely. I think we push right up to 90 to 100K, maybe 90K, we pull back and we push up to 100, 100 pulls back. 100K is going to reject, take profits at 100K. Not financial advice, but uh, it's a big round number. Uh, you can buy the pullback. So, you know, if you sold half your positions at 100K or maybe just a little below, everyone's going to front run that 100K number. There'll be a lot of short interest and margin interest. And then buy the pullback, but then once we're firmly above 100k, I think by September, I think it's a fast push up by November to 155,000. The reason is we're going to need to start QE money printing. We have BlackRock Fidelity pouring into Bitcoin. The bank term funding program ended, um, and and I put an X here because we didn't have a lot of bank failures. Now we're hearing there may be lots of banks on the verge of collapse. Now, why is that important? That would force the Fed to realize they've broken the economy, lower rates and start QE money printing. So, you know, we may have to turn that red X back into a green X, and then we might see QE money printing. We still have de-dollarization on the BRICS nations happening. I'm gonna move this green check over because we don't know yet, okay? Money printing to pay down our debt. We Again, we've got a lower interest rate and get that money printer going. So that because the liquidity cycles are what drive the market moves. It's not the Bitcoin having, it's liquidity coming into the markets. Uh, that's a mistake. People say that the having is going to push prices higher. It doesn't. Typically, we see a bit of a sell-off after the having. All right, de-dollarization on USD, hyperinflation, BRICS nations are <clears throat> using back less dollars. And we talk about supply and demand shock on Bitcoin. Excess supply of dollars, less demand, more inflation. So that's going to contribute to this and a flight to quality, potentially, I believe, to Bitcoin. Corporate accumulation, certainly have been seeing that uh, with Michael's strategy and uh, others. Country adoption. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add another check on there. As soon as another country comes out and say they did it. Uh, so far, it's El Salvador, some rumblings of other countries. Certainly, you know, China and Russia are big holders of Bitcoin. And uh, so, but I'm going to reserve that you know, until we start seeing FOMO of the other countries to come in to start buying Bitcoin. So <clears throat> now we have 
the post having minor supply selling, we, so that means less selling of Bitcoin because they it's harder to mine for them. That is going to slowly start happening. Uh, and uh, we'll see that probably happening later, basically less so that'll contribute contribute to number eight, less available exchange supply equals demand surge. Uh, well, I think we're seeing the early stages of that. The last article that we looked at showing, uh, and I'll just pull that up here so you guys can see that, that I actually closed that page. I'm sorry, but it was, um, uh, might be here, basically, what did it say? Uh, okay, what's going on? Binance users lose millions. This is breaking news, you guys. Binance users lose millions after accounts hacked. Billionaire Chamath Pali Pataya, however you say that, issues 500K uh, Bitcoin prediction. Okay, so this is sort of a, a, a jumbled news announcement. Um, Chamath, of course, is early Facebook investor, billionaire. Um, now, you always have to have a little bit of skepticism when a big crypto investor issues a high price target because they are trying to push markets higher because they have a bunch of it. Um, so anyway, I lost, I, I didn't, the other article we had up a minute ago talked about the, um, uh, the, the less, the reduced supply shock on exchanges. There's a, a less exchange on exchange. Um, all right. You know what? I'm just going to bumble that if I keep trying to, it was right in here, uh, here, Bitcoin, Ethereum on exchanges dropped to new lows. How about that? Uh, so we're starting to see, just had an alert fire here. We're starting to see one hour ERI buy block on uh, iBit. And so we can look at that too. But basically this is starting to mean what this says. So less available exchange supply equals demand surge. Um, we, we are maybe starting to see that. So I'm going to delete that off of there. Political support in favor of Bitcoin and crypto. Now we are starting to see that you guys. And uh, it was originally both sides were starting to say that. And then uh, Biden just sort of vetoed the crypto friendly bill. Uh, I, I guess he doesn't like votes, but uh, it doesn't matter, I think, in the end. Um, so um, he'll, I, I think he'll be voted out unless they, they imprison the other candidates. So, so we're starting to see these dominoes start to line up. And of course, number 10, the bursting of the global sovereign fiat debt bubble. You, you know, I, I think I... <clears throat> I, I'm going to combine that. I'm going to combine that, make a change to that because we're hearing rumblings of the uh, commercial real estate market, which I've been saying for years is the other shoe has now never dropped. Lots of big office buildings empty in New York City, Washington, D.C., Austin, uh, and, and that hasn't really come to light. That could certainly trigger another real estate uh, bust. And so let's do this and just change this together. I think it's it's worthy of doing that. Uh, let's see, I would say global, global sovereign debt, fiat debt bubble, and let me just see, and a re, real estate crash, and that's commercial. So global sovereign fiat uh, bubble, I guess debt is part of it. No, debt is sovereign. Global fiat, you take out sovereign, but that's countries, and take changes to commercial. What do you guys think? I know we've had an active conversation going in the M3 Trader chat, but uh, look at this, you guys. Uh, these are starting to add up. And as I said all along, each think of each one of these as a small smoldering campfire, and each one, if it ignites, could ignite all of them into a giant forest fire like California usually sees. What are your thoughts, you guys? Any comments on that? I'll open up the chat here in a minute and take a look at this. So uh, let me close that down. Uh, I think that's about all we have. Time for here, we do cover some more things in the uh, Go Live Deeper into Coin recommendations. Uh, let's see, the one hour IBIT, so hitting a sell block, so uh, not, not impressed or concerned about that. We can take a quick look at some of the coins I've been watching. Uh, I, let's talk about total market cap. We do cover that in more detail tomorrow. Here is my concern, however. Uh, we have, while it could be a bull flag, we still have this downward lower highs on the top total market cap. And uh, I did share a chart in our M3 Active Trader private chat earlier today. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Uh, probably can see my desktop, but let me just see if I can pull that up here. And uh, is this, I don't know if I'm in the right chat there. No, I'm not. Let me just pull this up there. Sorry, guys, I want to give you the, here, this is what I was suggesting. So this would suggest that on a total market cap, <clears throat> we also have sell blocks up in here. Um, if we did reject here and sold off down to around 2.25 trillion again, 
that would be the bounce point and the breakup. I do expect to turn around a resistance point at three trillion, um, but that was the to- that was the top of the markets in the last cycle, and then a pullback, and then we push higher. Okay, so if you guys can't see that, I'll drop it uh, in the, uh, the the chat here somehow. Uh, let me know if you can see this. I'm just pulling. This is a screenshot from our M3 Active Trader chat this morning. I'm going to take a screenshot of that real quick. All right, and then we'll get back over to the charts. Okay, let's see. You guys, you can't see it. All right. So basically, I'll drop that chart right in there for you guys, and it's in the chat. Uh, I wonder if I can drop it onto the chart. I think I probably can. How about this? And usually, I can drop an image there. So right, you should be able to see this. And uh, look at that. When there's a will, there's a way. Okay, let me make this bigger. Okay, so what I've done here, this is an overlay on uh, the total market cap. I believe this is a weekly. And so if I overlay this, I what I'm suggesting is if we cannot put in higher highs here and we reject, but see the total market cap leads the market, not Bitcoin. Um, and so this gives me some concern if any rally, it's a tough one. On the one hand, Bitcoin should break up to new highs on the fifth attempt, uh, in which case we would see this pushing higher. We have buy, a buy block on the total market cap, but we have this, this downward trending trend line. If it does break below its 21 and 50, I think we come down on this range because this is where the higher lows are coming. And that catapults us to the $3 trillion level uh, with some intermediate resistance. But so those are the two scenarios. And I'll leave that on here for you guys uh, to look at. So, uh, however, you know, look, if, if it does break above, then it's it's a nice bull flag. And we talked about that. We will talk about that in M3 tomorrow with a measured move uh, on that quite a bit higher on the total market cap. So many are starting to say this is has potential to be the biggest bull run ever. Uh, I want to emphasize potential, uh, not get carried away, uh, and so you know be uh, be careful with uh, going all in. But but starting the dollar cost average would make sense here in the near term. So let me do this here. We've got this on the daily. This study. I'll go back to a daily on Bitcoin and just to see if there's anything that looks really good here. Otherwise. Uh, I don't see a lot happening in these markets. We've got a few that are top 10%. Uh, and if we look at sectors, we can look at that. But um, I think we've covered everything that I want to cover you guys today. And we've run out of time here. So uh, everyone, have a great week, everybody. I, I do I have identified some strong buy candidates for tomorrow's class in M3 Active Traders. So again, if you're not already in our M3 Active Trader class, go over to moonstream.io. Down at the bottom, there's also some free resources for you there. Our, sign up for our weekly Monday newsletter. Uh, you can sign up for this week's classes live. Uh, you can get our trader success checklist. Five biggest mistakes crypto mis- uh, investors make and my past and future for Bitcoin report. So make sure you get those. And then, of course, sign up. Find out about this M3 Active Trader course. I do a little bit, a minimum about a limited amount of private one-on-one coaching and portfolio creation and management. If you have interest in that, you can click there, watch that video and uh, book a call with me. Okay, everybody. Thanks so much. Uh, I see a couple more chats here. Okay. Thank you guys. Thanks for being here and I hope you enjoyed. Um, I do think we're getting very close to a big move in Bitcoin and crypto. A little bit of divergence there on the total market cap versus Bitcoin. But certainly if Bitcoin rallies hard, it can, it can, carry the total market cap. Keep in mind, Bitcoin itself is over a trillion dollar market cap and Bitcoin or the total market cap right now is around uh, 2.5. So it could pull, it could rally, it could it could lead this bull market, it certainly could. And again, our, we're breaking out of this, we get above 2.6 trillion, then we're looking at bull flag area, the measured moves much, much higher. So that's exciting, you guys. All right, everybody, well, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be back in the office uh, for those of you in M3. And of course, our Retire Rich class on Thursday, I am back and I'll be on with Mike on Thursday to look at our inner circle watch list for the finding the future Netflix and Amazons that uh, are out there. And I think we've got a couple of good candidates. All right, everybody. Uh, bye, everyone. I'll uh, let you guys go. Enjoy your week and we'll talk to you again soon. See you next week.